Hi everyone, Greg here. So I saw in the comments of the previous videos that you were saying the terminal was quite small, the font was quite small. So I made this bigger for you guys. I hope that's a lot better now. So let's get to the topic. How do you run a program within a program? So let's say that I wanted to start gedit, right? So I'll just type this in and then we'll see it running. Um, so how do you do this programmatically? How do you start gedit from within or any program really, but we'll just take gedit as an example. How do you start this within a program? So uh, I'm just gonna go to the directory here. Uh, and the thing is, I first going to do this the wrong way. Now, this way is the easy way, which is why I'm going to show it to you. And then we're going to discuss uh, what the issues are with it and then how to do it better. Okay, so now I've written this program. I've included standard lib so I can use system. And here I'm calling gedit. I have a printf before. And a printf after and keep that in mind when you see the program actually running so i'm going to compile that very simply uh what are we going to call that uh program main.c okay and now let's run it and then we see that sure enough this is working and you see that here down below i don't get back my prompt and i don't see the second printf i'm going to close this and now this is showing up. So system is doing this thing called blocking. It is basically uh, interrupting the rest of the program uh, until it is finished doing what it's doing. Okay, why, why is this a bad thing? What's wrong with system? Well, basically system causes the running of an entire shell. Okay, so now we have to discuss what a shell is. Basically, a shell is a program which produces a prompt, waits for the user to type in a command, then runs that command, produces the prompt again, and waits for the next command, right? So this is basically what I'm using right now, the bash shell. So historically, you had the born shell. So the born shell is basically named after the person who wrote it, Mr. Born. The shell, the idea of a shell is that it's the outer layer of a program. So when you think about software, software is layered. You have the kernel and the device drivers. Those are the closest to the metal. And then the application is like the top layer that which the user actually interacts with. So the shell, this is the, the outermost layer that the 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 user is actually interacting with so you had the born shell and then you have bash bash is the born again shell so this was uh basically like the next generation of shell uh, so i can show you here that bash is in fact what i'm using and bash is overwhelmingly the most popular shell uh, you have Z shell out there. I don't know if it's pronounced Z shell or Z shell, but that's another, probably the second most popular. And you have many others. So you're running an entire shell when you're running system. Now, why is that a problem? Well, it's not necessary. So it's basically bloat. It's running way more software than you need to. Uh, it is also giving a great opportunity to hackers. So if I go back here, never take user input and put it straight into this right so if i were to replace this with uh let's say if i had something like this and if whatever were in string let's say that it came from um user input well i i could type something like this and then semicolon and then you can use your imagination as to what you could put in there next and so a hacker could easily make a total dog's breakfast of your computer. So never put user input straight into system. Since system is running a shell, that basically means that there's the potential of using a scripting language and so on. So you imagine throwing this into system, the, the harm it can potentially do. So system is slow and inefficient because it's running an entire uh, shell. So what is the better way of doing it? And when you think about it, 
I don't want to save this. Uh, when you think about it, the shell that you're running is actually running a program within a program, right? So if I if I run gedit, gedit as a program, it was launched from within the bash shell. Bash had to somehow run that program. Also, what's worth pointing out is why does this even work? Because gedit is not the full path of the program, right? So what it really is, I can use which gedit user bin gedit that is the full path of the program. Now what I can do here, it can do echo echo path. Now what you will see here is that you have those paths separated by colons. There's like a whole bunch of them here. The colons that separate different paths. What will happen every time you type in a command, Bash shell will look for a file of that name in any of those directories and it will uh, run that program if it finds it. So basically almost everything you do in the in the shell is running a program within a program. There's some exceptions to that. Uh, for example, CD. Uh, CD is uh, is what allows Bash internally to keep track of the current directory. So this is actually something internal to Bash. So if I do Bash CD, then there's actually no output the way that you had with um, gedit. So some exceptions notwithstanding, everything you do in the Bash is a program running within a program. So if I show this again, here gedit, I did not put the full path there. And the reason we got away with that is because, again, we're running a shell when we're running system. So what happens when you start your computer? You start the BIOS. The BIOS will then load Grub, if that's what you're using on your computer, let's say. Grub then loads the kernel. So Linux starts running. What Linux will do, the, the Linux kernel, it will then start the first program. That program is called init. So with this command, I can see the processes which are running on my system. I can use a pipe to um, see init. And then what I notice here is that root began this process init. And this is PID, so the process ID, it has a PID of 1. This is the first program that ran on the computer. So every program on your computer, except for the BIOS, is at some level a program which got started by another program. Okay, so now in, in our program, how can we start another program the proper way? Okay, so now what is the proper way of doing this? Well, first I want to do a quick refresher of the command line arguments. So if I start a new program, I'm going to include just standard IO. Okay, so now I wrote this very simple program. What it does, it takes the command line arguments. So when you type your command just after the prompt, and then you put a space and then you put various arguments. Those arguments, they are accessible through this mechanism here. So the argument count, okay, this tells me how many of them there are and that's a list of them. So that's a, that is an array of strings. So it's a pointer to character pointers, right? And I will simply loop through them and print them all out. One thing to note is that the first argument, you'll see it there now as I run it, the first argument is always the name of the program itself. Right, so I compile that and now I run it. And yeah, so I didn't actually give any arguments, but if I run it again, you see that the first, the first argument is the name of the program itself and then whatever I typed as a parameter. Right, so... I can I can put whatever there and you see this always works. Okay, another thing that I can point out is that here I have the option of doing this. And 
that is also an array of strings same as this there is no there's no integer this time to indicate how many of them there are so the last element of this array will simply be a null pointer and you i won't do it here now but you can simply try this for yourself you can loop through this and this will give you the environment variable and this is the mechanism to access that and to access those environment variables in your program okay so that's just a refresher because now if we want to actually start our program well the function to use is exec right so i'm gonna have to include this header file and what i can do here is exec and then the l means list so a list of command line arguments right and there are different things you can do the e the e here is for environment variables so you can choose to pass on various environment variables to your program as well so lots of options here so now let me actually write it so let's do main exec dot c okay um I forgot return here. So if you look at this carefully, I have again my printfs. I have a printf after, so bear that in mind. You will see uh, in a minute what happens with that. I have the full path. Now this time I have to put the full path. I'm using exec. There's no bash. There's no uh, looking for uh, gedit within um, a list of directories or whatever. So this is not going to work. If I don't put the full path and then the command line arguments then first one is the name of the program now here I can get away with putting just the program name I have my first variable and then I have to make it plain where the list ends and I do that with a no pointer or simply a zero uh, that indicates this is the end of the command line arguments okay so now let's compile this Okay, so now I'm running the program and you see that sure enough it works. Gedit is running. I am not getting back my prompt and now see what happens. I get my prompt back. What happened to after running Gedit? Well, what happens is exec causes a process to turn into another process. So I was running this program main exec. As I call the function exec, this process basically disappeared well it, it didn't really disappear but it changed into the gedit uh, process and so whatever followed the exec it was no longer running because that process no longer exists okay one last comment is you see this warning the warning doesn't matter much because it's working it's actually running so it's complaining that it doesn't get the sentinel now the sentinel is the null at the end now you might say i did actually put the null there well what i should have done uh let me correct that i just cast it to a character pointer uh and now uh, now it is going to work and basically it's going to get cast to a 64-bit null rather than an int, which is 32 bits. So that's, you know, it's it's a minor thing and it doesn't really matter. But uh, to keep the code clean, I suppose, put the cast to the character pointer there. So now the obvious remark is, OK, so the the process change into another process. Sometimes that's not what you want. You want to start a program, but you want your main program to still keep running. So how do you do that? Well, you do this with a fork, and that's the next thing we're going to examine. Okay, so now the next step, I'm going to do a fork. So let's have a quick look at the man page. I have to include a couple of header files. This is the function. This is a syscall. And what it is telling you is that the child process is an exact duplicate of the parent process. So in other words, the process gets split into two 
identical processes except for the following and then it doesn't really matter to us now you can read that if you want but i want to get down to here it talks about the return value zero is returned in the child process okay the pid of the child process is returned in the parent right so if it returns zero we are in the child process okay so now uh let's go to our our program oh gosh i did that again um right okay now this is how i have changed the code we're doing a fork from this point onward we have two processes if we are in the child then this if will execute so this exec here will be run if we are in the parent then this if will be skipped and then in the parent uh, will be run this print f after running well i'm going to change that right and if we are in the child then the execute then that process will change into another process and so we'll never see this print f in the child okay only in the parent so now if we run this okay and so what you noticed is that both the print f showed up and we got the prompt back before gedit even had a chance to open up all right so this is how you start a program within another program the topic of the next video will be pipes which is one level up from what we've been doing here pipes is basically whereby you take the output of one program and make it the input of on the next one and we'll see how to do this programmatically in the next video for now i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe and i'll see you in the next one